Hey, what's up? Let's talk about how to organize your digital life. If you're like me, you've got a lot of things going on, a lot of notes, a lot of meetings. You're running from point A to point B and you're trying to figure out how to organize it all. So what are some of the best tools you can use to do that? Well, today I'm gonna talk about four different tools. One, two, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> four tools that you can use to organize your notes and everything around you. Um, some of these are free, some of these are not. So let's dive in. Tool number one, it's on your iPhone if you have an iPhone and that is Apple Notes. Uh, Apple Notes is used by a lot of people um, in terms of organizing their life. Why? Because it's on the phone, it's free. It's super easy to use. You just open it up and you start typing. And if you got a Mac, it's on your Mac. If you got an iPad, it's on your iPad. It's everywhere. Now, it's got some advantages because obviously it being free and it being everywhere. The disadvantages for it are, are a lot of like the third party extensions and a lot of the cool stuff that you can do with other note taking apps that we're going to talk about here in a second. And one of, it, one of them is, is you can't email in notes. In other words, you get a note from a friend, uh, an email from a friend, and you want to send it over to Apple Notes. It works great if you're in the Apple Mail app um, on your Mac, but if you're on the phone, it's not nearly as easy and not nearly neat and clean as it is, say, with like Evernote, which we'll talk about here in a second. So third-party extension tools like If This Then That or Zapier doesn't work really great with it. It's a good tool for just storing notes itself. However, it's a little limited. In fact, you can put them in folders, but you can't really tag the notes. Um, and it's, again, it's a proprietary format. So in other words, if you want to get your notes out of Apple Notes, then you probably likely have to use a third-party tool to do that. So for me, it's not really an option unless I'm doing something really quick. I need to write something down really super fast. I may use Apple Notes, but to be honest with you, I'm not super crazy about it because I don't think at the end of the day, it's a really, really great tool. It's nearly as rich as I need it to be to capture all the stuff that I see on the web, ideas, everything. It's, it's fair, but it's not by any stretch the best option for you. Option number two is Microsoft OneNote. Now you may be thinking, Daryl, you just went from Apple to a Microsoft product. Why would you recommend Microsoft OneNote? Because it's actually probably one of the best Microsoft products out there. And it's, it's, it's one of my favorite products they make. First off, it's actually really easy to use. Um, I like the way they organize things in terms of notebook, notebooks and how they organize all of your information. I like the fact that when you write a note, it's a freeform canvas. In other words, I can draw, I can put a table somewhere, I can put a to-do list somewhere. It's just a big blank sheet of paper when you're dealing with a note. It's not just like a single thing that you have to write down like an outline um, like you would like for like Apple Notes. You can actually kind of really make it a freeform canvas. So in my opinion, that works really, really well if you have a project or something you're working on that's got multiple things coming in on a sheet of paper and you want to kind of just draw the whole thing out. Microsoft OneNote excels in that area. Um, also, price tag is not bad. For a simple Microsoft account, it's free. If you have like a Hotmail or I guess well now is a live.com or any of the Microsoft accounts, if your work has a Microsoft business account, you get that for free. So you can't really beat that price. I mean, I'm sure at some point, actually, there probably is a storage limit, which you do have to pay. But for the most part, if you're just storing text and basic images, you should be fine. So I actually really like it from a price standpoint. And you can also email notes in. Um, it does work with tools like If This Then That. The problem is it's not super nearly as functional as, say, like Evernote's going to be in terms of extensibility. But it does some basic things uh, like e being able to email notes in. So I actually like it for the most part. I actually like it because of a different way of thinking. It seems a little more intelligent in some ways than Evernote does in terms of what I can do with some of my notes. However, it's uh, not exactly something I want to use on a daily basis. I found some things about a little bit frustrating, um, being not super easy to figure out how to tag notes, how to do some things that I wanted to do. I, I liked it overall as a tool. I just like the way it looked. I like the purple. I think the color scheme is a bit different from everything else that's out there. But overall for me, it didn't quite cut the mustard. So, so far, Apple Notes is out and OneNote is out. So the third tool you may, be, you may use, I'm no longer using it, however, is Evernote. And Evernote is probably the most popular tool of organizing your information. And part of it is because they did a great job when they came out of the gate that it was free uh, for most people. And then if you want to upgrade a little bit, you can pay a little extra. I and mean, that's still the case. However, they become more and more limited with what they're allowing you to do for free. And that's honestly, at the end of the day, they got to make some money. So that makes sense. But Evernote is possibly one of the better tools of capturing information for a couple reasons. One, their app, they have a separate app. I believe it's called Scannable, which allows you to take screenshots of whiteboards, documents, and automatically puts them in Evernote. It does a great job of capturing that information really, really well, so it's super readable. Um, 
really well done. If you're willing to pay a little extra, you get the OCR, which basically means that they can read images for you. So in other words, if a word is on an image and you type that image into search, it'll pop right up. Uh, it's got super well extensibility with a lot of it's this than that. A lot of other third-party tools talk to it really well. In fact, I don't know a third-party tool that doesn't talk to Evernote. It does that super, super well. Also, you can email notes in, but you can also get like super fine grain when you email note in. You can email note to a certain notebook by using certain little symbols. Uh, you can even tag notes. Really well done. So Evernote by far for me is super easy to use in terms of getting stuff in there and then organizing that information. So I like it well. There's a cost factor to it. If you really want to be a power user, at some point you're going to pay for it. If you end up becoming one of those people that wants to be a power user and you're going to use it a lot, a lot. Here's a little hint. Just Google buy Evernote points and then see if you can buy Evernote points, which you can then convert into a free year of Evernote premium or plus. Uh, that's what I did. Last two years I've done that. I paid no more than 12 bucks for an entire year of Evernote premium. So I've never actually paid the full price for Evernote premium. So honestly, that's a good deal if you can Google it and you can find it. So I recommend you check that out. So over, overall though, Evernote for 99% of the people out there, it's gonna do exactly what you need to do. And again, as I said before, I like it a lot. The fourth tool is one that I've really kind of really started to love more. And that's, De I mean, I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong by the way. It's Devon Think, D-E-V-O-N-T-I-N-T-H-I-N-K, Devon Think. Uh, it's a tool that somebody turned me on to uh, about three weeks ago. And it's a little expensive, but it's like a software license. Like once you buy it, you own it. So it's not like an annual thing. And I could compare it to Evernote, but that would not be really fair because this thing is a research tool. Basically, you can store everything in there um, and you can throw in their Word documents, you can throw Excel sheets in there, you can throw, um, you can throw in uh, text files, RTF files, you can throw everything in there and it captures it all. But the cool thing about it is it's super smart in terms of telling you what documents are related to other documents. It almost has this like artificial intelligence about it. And I find it super, super easy to use. It also has a built-in RSS reader, which is great. So I can put all my RS, RSS feeds into a single file and I can go through them and then I can tag them, move them around, put them in different notebooks inside Devon Think, and all of a sudden basically do all my research inside of one tool. The other thing is it'll let you index files on your Mac. So in other words, I can throw a folder in there and it won't store my files in Devon Think, but it'll index a file. So then I can all of a sudden start seeing which files are related to other files. So if I'm working on something for our creative team and I type in a certain word, it'll pull all the other documents that have that word related to it inside that document. In other words, it becomes super quick and super powerful really fast in terms of doing the research. Now, it doesn't talk to the third-party tools nearly as well as Evernote and those other things to do. You kind of have to do a lot of Apple scripting, which I've had to do to make it do what I need to do. But it's a very, very powerful tool. I really enjoy using it, and I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, I had to give up some things, like it doesn't have a great scanning app on the iPhone. So how do you some third-party workarounds for that? But overall, I really like the way it kind of centralizes everything for me in one simple one simple app. I open it up. There's my RSS. There's everything that I wanted to read from Instapaper. I brought in other stuff in there. So it makes that super easy to use. Plus, it doesn't store anything in a proprietary format. I can Everything is either in a text file, RTF file, or the original format you put it in. So I can get everything out of there real quickly if I needed to. Uh, also, I don't have to use a third-party cloud. I, mean, I, don't have, I don't have to trust their like cloud servers like you do with Evernote and hope that Evernote never gets hacked or anything like that. I can sync it via Dropbox, iCloud, or my own web dev server. So in other words, syncing is up to you and how you want to handle that. So I thought, to me, those options were overwhelmingly in favor of it. So that's what I'm using right now. If I have to go back to something, I'll probably go back to Evernote because Evernote, again, um, is a really good tool. Of course, the downside with Evernote is it stores everything in a proprietary format. So if you're thinking about one of those tools, um, test out Apple Notes if you haven't done that. If you want to test out OneNote, actually OneNote has a tool to take your Evernote and convert it back into OneNote if you want to try that out. Microsoft has done that for Mac and Windows. Um, but anyway, those are the full to four, four tools. OneNote, uh, sorry, Apple Notes, OneNote, Evernote, and Devin Think. I think you should give all four of them a try if you haven't done so. You probably have done, you probably did Apple Notes because it's on your phone. Give Devin Think a try. Download their uh, Devin Think Personal or Devin Think Pro uh, and download the free trial. I think you'll like it. 
Uh, I've actually really enjoyed organizing stuff around it. I've started writing blog posts and all that kind of stuff in there and found it super useful in terms of doing research and kind of keeping everything organized in the world around me. So until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.